Thank you for tuning in to the Reach Church podcast from our Wednesday night encounter service. Here is this week's message from Pastor Lucas Gonzalez. Well, we're going to pick it right up. We're in the book of Ephesians. We're in part 12. Um, part 12, who knew a four, four chapter book or six chapter book could take so many parts? I mean, we're going to be here till probably 2017 in this book, but we're going to make it. And uh, the book of Ephesians, part 12, and we're going to kick it up, kick it off right in verse 14 of chapter 3. And it'll be on the screens here. And I just want to let you know a little disclaimer. I'm going to read this portion of Ephesians out of the NASB. And I know that normally we kind of read out of the NLT. So if you've got your smartphones, there's a little button. You can actually switch translations. I don't know if y'all know that, but you're allowed to read something else other than the NLT. Um, wow. I mainly just read uh, the NLT because I'm from Ohio, and, and it's easier. It's like, it's like, it's like the, I feel like there are pictures in it, you know. So um, here we go, the NASB. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with the saints that which is the width and the length, and the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God, as to uh, fullness of God, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, Forever and ever. Amen. All right. So this is uh, Paul. He is writing and he is and when he begins it off, he says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the father. He's saying for this reason, I begin to pray and cry out to the father because right before this and you know it because we've been in it. He's talking about the wonderful mystery that God has entrusted to him to to. Uh, to get the message out to the Gentiles that they can have a place in Jesus Christ. And he's talking about that privilege and that honor that we have as believers to carry the message of Christ to those that don't know him. And when he's saying, when I think about that, I go to God, uh, I go to God in prayer, I go before the Father. And then it's in, in my Bible, it actually says, there's a header before this section. It says, it's Paul's prayer for spiritual growth. It's Paul's prayer for spiritual growth. So when Paul is writing this, he's exhorting the church of Ephesus. He's encouraging them to grow spiritually. He's encouraging them to go to the next level. How many of you guys know that God didn't save us so that we could stay stagnant? How many of you know that God has saved us and has called us to grow spiritually? How many of you know that the kingdom of God only knows one direction and that's forward? You see what I'm saying? That God didn't call us, and there's never a point in our Christian walk or in our spiritual maturity where we can say, I've got it, and I could begin to set this thing on cruise control. Pastor Chris says all the time that whenever we think we have arrived, we have begun our decline. You know? John Maxwell, he has a book called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And in this book, he says that you don't, nobody grows on accident. Are you with me? Like You just don't grow by accident or by happenstance or by chance. Most companies, and you guys understand, and, and this will make sense to you, but in the first six months when you're working at like a tech job or a customer service job or a sales job, the, the sharpest you'll ever be is probably within those first six months because you have learned everything that there is to learn to do your job. But for the most part, if you take somebody that's been working for six months and somebody has been working 10 years, their skill level is about parallel majority of the time. The reason being is because the person that's been working 10 years has stopped growing. They just begin to perform their job. Does that make sense? And so nobody grows by, by accident. Nobody grows by happenstance. Like my daughter, we, we've got to feed this girl in order for her to grow. And she could eat, baby, I'm telling you. I'm like, dang, we got to order her our own 
chicken nuggets from Chick-fil-A. Wow. I'm like, can we get a, I want to get the toy, so it's great. Well, you know, nobody grows by happenstance or by chance. you got to be intentional about your growth. Are you with me? Athletes are disciplined in their training because they know that they're not going to outperform anybody just by showing up and playing a game. Are you with me? You don't, I mean, listen, talent will only take you so far. Talent, it will only take you, but hard work will make up for what, 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 uh, what talent can't. You see what I'm saying? Like your talent and, and your gifts, it will take you places. But if, if you don't grow spiritually, if you don't have character, if you don't have integrity, if you are not trying to grow in those areas, then all of a sudden your, your, your gift won't, won't last. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Paul is calling us to grow spiritually. And 2016 has got to be a year where we grow spiritually. It's got to be a year where we made up our mind that I'm going to fall in love all over again with God. And 2015 may have been a great year, but I have decided that I am not going to stay in the same place for another year. But I'm going to go to the next level because God has called each and every one of us to a higher, higher level and a deeper calling. Isn't that right? God is calling us to grow. I don't know if you guys know, but at the five-year anniversary, we're going to have two campuses. You know what I mean? We're growing. We've got no choice but to grow. You see what I'm saying? And if we're going to grow, then we've got to grow spiritually. And this is what Paul's saying. We've got to grow spiritually because we have been entrusted with the greatest responsibility of all time, telling people that are far from God that Jesus died and made a way for man to be reconciled to God. That's the greatest responsibility. And to be effective in it, we've got to grow. Amen? And it's good. I love the Bible. I got to read this thing. So in this passage, there's five principles that I want to point out. And I kind of want to pull out of this passage and and look at. But I want to work it from the bottom to the top. So I don't want to, I'm going to work it backwards. I actually learned this from Pastor Chris. So if it doesn't make sense, it's his fault. Um... And I'm going to start at 21, and I'm going to go to 14, but you'll understand. Just follow along. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask, think, uh, or imagine according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Number one for tonight is give God the glory. When we're looking at spiritual growth, all right, I want, you, I want you to understand that it's spiritual. It's supernatural. There's an element of it that we cannot do on our own unless God gets involved because it's spiritual. Are you, are you with me? So we've got to give God the glory. Look at this in Psalms chapter 1. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbanks, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. How many of y'all want to prosper in all you do? Right? Listen, I want to prosper in everything that I do. I want to be a good campus pastor. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good dad. I want to be a good son to Pastor Chris. You know what I mean? I want to prosper in everything that I do. And so when it comes to the area of growing spiritually, I've got to make sure that I understand that this is something that God that God does. That I can't grow spiritually. I can discipline myself to do what God has called me to do, but I can't make myself grow. You know what I mean? That tree planted along the riverbank doesn't do nothing but it just be planted there. It just grows. And, and it bears forth its fruit in every season. Are you with me? That, that we've got to be connected to God and let God do what he does. Like Daniel said today when he was uh, during worship that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit, says the Lord. Are you with me? That there, th- this thing... 
of growth that we can discipline ourselves, but we've got to make sure that we're not getting puffed up and we're not getting prideful when we're talking about, oh, look at me. You know what I mean? Like God is doing this work in you. That's the only reason you're growing. God is doing a work in me. That's why I'm growing. It's not, not because of me, but it's because what God is doing in me. Does that make sense? So number one, give God all the glory. Yes? All right. Here we go. Peeling it backwards. Verses 18 and 19. <coughs> may, be, may you be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. So first of all, we don't want to touch his glory. We want to give God all the glory. But then we want to understand the height, the depth, the length, the width of his love. That we would be able to comprehend with all the saints how absolutely amazing God's love is. The love that surpasses all knowledge. Are you with me? So number two, to understand his love. If we're going to grow spiritually, first of all, we don't want to touch his glory. Second of all, if we understand his love, we're going to grow spiritually. Are you with me? Look at this in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. It says, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Like when you understand that, that changes something. That changes something on the inside of each and every one of us. It unlocks something on the inside of each and every one of us that God's love is amazing. Neither death nor life nor angels or demons nor fears of the day nor worries about tomorrow nor even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that amazing? When we understand his love, we begin to grow spiritually. That there's nothing that we can do that would separate us from God's love. Are you with me? And so sometimes people don't understand this because those that are not in the church think that there are things they can do to separate themselves from God. Right? But we've got a responsibility to grow spiritually so that we can let those that don't know that there's nothing that you can do to separate yourself from God's love. And when you understand his love, we begin to grow spiritually. Are you with me? Let's go to the next one. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love. So... When we understand his love and we don't touch his glory, then we all, all of a sudden begin to build our life on this thing. We begin to build our, our everything on the understanding of his love. We root ourselves down in his love, understanding that I am his son and he is my daddy. Are you with me? And we begin to grow because we root ourselves down into this thing. Number three, love is our foundation. It's our foundation. Look at this. Matthew 27, 24, and 25. Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise like a person who builds house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in and torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. The love of God. That we can't do anything to separate ourselves from that love. When we understand it, it's our foundation. And when the storms of this world and trials and tribulations come, we know that we're not separated from God's love. It's our foundation. It's our bedrock. And I can stand in tough times because I understand God's love. I mean, Jesus had tough times. Are you with me? But he, st but he still understood the Father's love. He still never, you know, he never turned his back on what God wanted for his life. He said, not my will, but your will be done. 
like being a Christian doesn't mean it's going to be rainbows and unicorns and everything's going to be perfect. Everybody knows that there's going to be tough times, but it's what we do in those tough times that determine are we going to grow spiritually? Are we building our life on the rock that Jesus saved us and nothing can separate us from the love of God? When we get that understanding, we grow spiritually and we understand you know, that, you know, to get up, to, to, to go up, we, you know, we're going to have higher levels and higher devils. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be things in our life that we face. But when we face those things, it doesn't mean that we're separated from God's love. It just means God is ready to do something in our lives to take us to a new anointing, a new level. You know, there's only wine because the grape got crushed. Everybody wants to celebrate and drink some wine, have a good time and dance on the wedding floor, you know, do the do the dance and everything, huh? Or if the olive is crushed, then you get olive oil. You, you know what I mean? Things that are precious come from crushing. And when we go through crushing difficult times, it doesn't mean that we're separated from God's love. It means God is doing something in our lives, taking us to the new level. Are you with me? God has called us to grow and go to the next level. Are you with me? That's going to happen for all of us 2016. Ephesians 3.16, that you would grant, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the power through his spirit and in the inner man. David said, deep cries unto deep. Like the deep parts of me, the inner parts of me cry out to know the deep parts of you, God. Are you with me? That before he formed us, he knew us. He knew our spirit. Our spirit desires to know God. Our spirit has a hunger to grow in a, in a relationship and a knowledge of God. Are you with me? We've got to be led by our spirit. Look at this. Number four is inner strength. As we grow in inner strength, we grow spiritually. Are you with me? Jude 120 says, You beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That God wants us to build ourselves up in our most holy faith and in our inner man, praying in the Spirit. Are you with me? And I don't want to say too, too much about this if you've got questions, but I want to say a couple things about praying in the Spirit. You can, you can roar and, and shout and raw all day, you know, that's good. But it may not be as effective as if when you're praying when God's presence is there. Are you seeing you see what I'm saying? When God's presence comes and you begin to pray a prayer of, out of his presence, out of the spirit. You know, I can't, it's hard for me to explain, but, but when, you, when it happens, you know it's happening. You know, sometimes when you're praying, you feel like you're throwing paper at a wall and it's not, nothing's happening. But sometimes you feel God's presence and you feel like he hears everything you say. Are you with me? We've got to get strength in our inner man. And then God has also called us and, and made available for every one of us to have a prayer language. Every one of us to have a heavenly prayer language. To have a, a direct line of access with God the Father. With a, with a heavenly prayer, prayer language. It's not weird or not, nothing like that. You know? It's not made for show. It's made for you and God. It's a love language. You know? Are you with me? And so if you've got questions about that, I'd love to tell you about it. All right? But it's, 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 it's inner strength. When we grow, when, we're, when our spirit man connects with God, when there's a... Look, look at what it says in verse 16. It says, uh, according to the riches of glory, to be strengthened through his... Uh, th strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. The Holy Spirit desires to strengthen us. Are you with me? All right, Ephesians 3.15. And from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And this is where I want to hang, hang my hat tonight when we're talking about spiritual growth. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Look at John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. It says, this is Jesus, truly, truly, I say to you, 
He who believes in me, the work that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. So number five is take on his name. Take on his name. Look at what he's saying. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. And if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. I'll go to the Father so that he may be glorified. I'll do it. Why is it that there are times when, when things are not happening, when we feel like we're asking? Because sometimes we're not asking in his name. And I'm going to show you what, I'm going to tell you what this means. For, for, for 22 years, Tiffany, her last name was Martin. Okay, she was Tiffany Martin. I know she's Asian and she's uh, Martin. I, I don't understand it either, but that's just how it happens. Right? That's your Teresa. Anyway, 22 years, her name was Martin. For, for 22 years, she couldn't go to the bank and take money out of my account because she didn't have my name. Are you with me? For 22 years, she, we didn't live together because she didn't have my name. Are you with me? But then when, when, when I married this girl and she took on my name, then my money is her money. Her money is my money. She can go to the bank and get whatever she wants. She can go and do whatever she wants. She can tell our kid whatever she wants. Why? Because she's got my name. Are you with me? Sometimes we're trying to do things for God, but it ain't God's name that's on it. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we're trying to do things with our own name on it because we think it'll help somebody, but we're not doing it in God's name. Are you with me? Listen, you know when everything, can I just, can I just talk real, right? You know how the Bible teaches us that we're the bride of Christ? Are you with me? And on our wedding day, she was my bride and she took on my name. And there was, there was a relationship, and as long as that relationship is intact, she's got my name and she can do anything that she wants in my name. Are you with me? In the same way, when we're in a love, intimate, deep relationship, when God is our husband and we are his bride and we carry the name of Jesus, then we can go into the heavenly account in the heavenly realms and say, I've got the name of Jesus. All these resources are mine. Are you with me? All these things are mine because I come in his name. I'm not doing this on my own agenda, on my own will, on my own purpose. I've come in the name of the Lord. I've not come by my own might or strength. I've come by the Spirit of the living God. And when we do this, we grow spiritually. We can't grow spiritually in our own name. We can grow spiritually. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and whoever, and, and you are the branches, and whoever abides in me, and I in you, bears much fruit. You see what I'm saying? We grow when we stay connected, when we bear the name of Jesus. Amen? Does that make sense? Whew. You know, there are privileges that come through intimacy with God. Right? There are privileges that come to knowing God. You know, we see it on the movies all the time, a guy and a girl, young guy, young girl. They're, they're doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. They're not married, whatever. Are you with me? And the girl will be like, no, we can't do this. Why not? Because this ain't right because we're not married. I, you don't love me. What's the guy going to say? Oh, I love you. I love you. I promise you I love you. Right? He wants to convince her that he loves her because love will open certain doors. Are you with me? All right. If you don't understand, then you need to talk to you need to talk to somebody. I mean, people will say that they love somebody to get what they want. Are you with me? But it, 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 it don't roll like that with God. We just can't give him lip service. God knows our heart to walk in his name and to bear his name and to operate in his name 
We have got to be intimate. We have got to be in love. We've got to lay our life down with, with, with Jesus. Does this make sense? Look at what it says in verse 15. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. That we're called to bear the name of Jesus. We're called to be in an intimate love relationship with Jesus. We've got to take on his name. Paul is writing to the church's Ephesus, and he's saying, come on, guys. We've got to grow spiritually because we've got the greatest responsibility in the world. Are you with me? We've got the greatest responsibility in the world. Let me recap these for you. Number one, give God the glory. Number two, understand his love. Number three, love is our foundation. Number four, inner strength. Number five, take on his name. This is the year where we grow spiritually, where we go to the next level. You can say, I feel like I'm good. Every one of us is called to grow and go to the next level. Listen to me. Your Bible reading in 2016, take it to the next level. Your prayer life in 2016, take it to the next level. If you don't fast and pray, take it to the next level. Your church attendance, take it to the next level. Your giving of your time, your talent, and your treasure, take it to the next level. This is the year where God takes us to the next level. Listen, we've got things in place here at Reach Church for, you to, for, for this to happen. We do this Bible reading plan as a church, the one-year Bible reading plan. I'm a slow reader. It takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. We've got Bibles in, in the hub, the, the one-year Bible reading plan. Pick one up tonight. Pick one up tonight and just make up your mind. We're going to kick off the year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're going to, we're going to let our body and our soul know that this is the year I'm going to the next level. We're going to fast and pray. We're going to see people come to know God like you've never seen it. This is the year we go to the next level. Are you with me? God has called us to bear his name. God has called us to grow spiritually because we have an incredible opportunity to see revival take place right here at Reach Church in Austin, Texas, Texas, and the world. I believe it. Do you believe it with me? Let's take on his name. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reach Church. For more information or to contact us, visit reachchurch.com. If you live in or are visiting the Austin area, we hope to see you soon at one of our services.